Florida Gulf. Sun, sand, water, palm trees. Nowhere does it come together better than in the Palm Coast area. Hammock Beach Resort, two great golf courses. The Ocean Course, designed by Jack Nicholas. The Conservatory by Tom Watson. And all else there is to do in the area, salt life and turf life come together in this episode of The Traveling Golf. This lager comes from a place that's been brewing beer for longer than anyone else in America, where men and women have crafted amber gold in the caves below since before refrigeration. It comes from Yingling, America's oldest brewery, and brings with it all the know-how that doing the thing well for nearly 200 years affords. Yingling, traditional lager. Respect, it's earned. When you want an overview of the two courses at Hammock Beach Resort, you go to a man who's been here since 2005, Brad Hauer, director of golf, and help the traveling golfer understand how this incredible golf paradise came to be. We have the conservatory, which I was hired to help build. It's a Tom Watson signature design golf course. Tom actually made 17 site visits. He really put his heart and soul into the project. And his imagination, mm -hmm. because this golf course is on a dead flat piece of property. So any elevation changes you see, he had to create. It was just a flat pine forest and the amount of earth that we moved for this project was tremendous and it's it's a very very unique golf experience. It doesn't look like your typical Florida golf course. It has elements of other places in the world. He had the unlimited budget per se and any use of the land that he wanted so Tom actually created the longest and hardest golf course in Florida, but I don't want that to scare you because we actually came up with a 12 sets of uh, different tee boxes. We have six original tee boxes, and then we created combo tees so that the player can choose a yardage in 200 yard increments. It's nice to have a golf course that's flexible, and it also is nice to have one that still provides a challenge. You've had some professional golf out here. Yes, in 2008, we had the uh, Ginsamir PGA Tour event played in the late fall. Ryan Palmer was actually the winner of that event. We uh, had the fourth highest score on tour that year. It'll just show you how difficult but fair. It's a very fair test. It's not a tricked up uh, golf course. It's, it is difficult. We have 187 bunkers here. Um, the golf course is long, but there's no force carries off the tee and there's no force carries to the green. Tom wanted you to be able to run your ball up to the green. The Nicholas course was actually here before Hammock Beach mm -hmm. Resort, and then the resort acquired the property. Yes, in 2006, the Hammock Beach Resort actually bought the ocean course and the lodge component uh, to that property. And when we did that, it really brought Hammock Beach to life. They call the six closing holes at the ocean course the Bear Claw. Unfortunately, Mother Nature took a swipe at Jack Nicholas's masterpiece. In 2016, Hurricane Matthew overcame the course. They did a major restoration, including regrassing with platinum past palum grass. The end result, not only beautiful, but more environmentally sensitive. Yes, Hurricane Matthew was devastating at the time, but in the long run, it became a blessing in disguise. The ownership and management company, Salamander, put three and a half million dollars back into the ocean course. The Platinum can handle salt water eight times more than regular Bermuda grass. So if we do have another event, we are very confident that the grass will be able to take the, the amount of salt water that comes into our property and be able to survive it and we'll be back open in just a matter of a couple of weeks. Nice little side effect to all of that regrassing with the Paspalum is that throughout the entire year it stays a beautiful emerald green. There's no dormancy. 
Yes, we're very impressed with how this grass can handle cold temperatures. The pass pale and platinum usually is just used on greens. Very rarely has it been used throughout the entire golf course. There's only a few golf courses in the entire country that have planted this grass wall to wall in their golf course. We mow the grass to fairway height throughout the golf course, so there's very little rough, hardly any rough actually. So it has a very pristine Augusta National look to it. Hurricane Matthew redesigned the dune line for us in a good way. We have almost a mile of ocean golf frontage, six holes directly on the, on the golf course. If you're looking for an ocean golf course, you have to come and play the ocean course here at Hammock Beach. And it definitely has some of Nicholas's signature items in there, large greens. This is definitely a, a softer Jack Nicholas design. You know, some of his designs can become pretty difficult, but this one he kept in mind the winds that we can get off the ocean. Players really enjoy playing this golf course, and the theme throughout the whole redesign is how do we make golf fun again? How do we make it just a little bit easier? How do we encourage more people to come out and play? And now it's time for the Stracoline putt of the day. When you're confident about the line, you hit a confident putt. And the three putts. Nicholas and Watson had some great duels over the years as competitors. Now, as golf course architects, let's recreate another duel here with the ocean course and the conservatory. So let's start from the tee. The Nicholas course off the tee. Nicholas course has uh, wide fairways, it's a little tighter than the Watson course. And the Watson course, large carters. Tom's course has wider. He's a little more generous off the tee. Bunkering is more severe with Tom Watson's course. The fairway bunkers on the Watson course are much more severe. From high lips to very deep valleys. An almost impossible shot for anything other than the pitching wedge. Jack is not so severe with the bunkering. And the style of the mounds that they use. Let's go with Nicholas. Nicholas is a little bit softer mounding. Tom's course is definitely more sharp, a higher, steeper mounding. Got to play them where they lie. And once you get to the greens, Nicholas. Tinier greens. Watson's greens are huge, very big. Rolling, undulating. Two great competitors on the golf course. Two great competitors in the design room. Bottom line, Hammock Beach Resort provides a one-two punch, Nicholas Watson, that will be an unforgettable golf experience. Introducing the Exotics CBX Hybrid. The CBX is crafted with technology that pushes the boundaries of low spin distance technology, combined with tour inspired feel and workability. A lightweight beta titanium face is combo brazed to a heavier hyper steel body for exceptional distance gains. The beta titanium faceplate incorporates variable face thickness technology, allowing for thin and thick compartments strategically positioned for optimal forgiveness and power, even on off-center hits. A newly engineered speed ramp sole minimizes turf interaction for maximum speed and stability at impact. This combination generates maximum club head speed and ball speed for huge distance gains. A carbon composite section in the sole allows for perfect weight distribution and center of gravity position. The result is a spin-killing, exceptionally versatile hybrid, capable of delivering tour-level distance and performance. To learn more about the exotic CBX hybrid or find a dealer near you, visit touredge.com. Some people go to a resort, they 
never want to leave. Others want to explore, maybe find another golf course or two. We've got our tour guide with us, Jason Whitmer, Director of Sales and Marketing, Florida's first coast of golf. Jason, you know this area pretty well. If somebody is staying at Hammock Beach Resort, I know there's a little cluster of golf courses close by. Let's start with the closest one, Palm Harbor. Tony, this is right outside of Hammock Beach Resort. Been a staple here of the golf community in uh, Palm Coast and uh, really popular amongst the residents here. A municipal golf course, one of the more playable courses. Mm -hmm. It's also very picturesque when you get here, a lot of water meandering through the property. Absolutely, this is a lot of fun. You know, not everybody wants to get uh, beat up with their golf game every day. So this gives people a good opportunity to come out, have a good time and, and get that confidence back up with their golf game. Just a little bit south of here, Florida's first coast of golf has opened up a brand new horizon to people for an opportunity to play Plantation Bay. It's a private community. Um, they've opened their gates to Florida's first coast of golf. This is 45 holes of golf in this great community, and uh, they're actually have got blueprints for another nine holes. Wow, that's a lot of golf. Mm. Tony, one of the good parts about Plantation Bay Golf and Country Club is the, the Beaumont course. It really has a private feel to it. I noticed that the fairways are lined by trees. It has a gentle roll all the way through there. And then you come to the bunkers, which are not only just challenging, but they're an artistic decoration on the golf course. Really some beauty to the bunker shaping on the Beaumont. If that's not enough, just go a little bit farther south. LPGA International. Huge part of the golf landscape here in Northeast Florida, Tony. The LPGA headquarters are located right there. Pause for a moment to get inspired by all the great players who have come through that organization and then head over to the Reese Jones course right next to the clubhouse. He has taken a flat plot of land and transformed it into a, a great golf course. Lots of mounds that can work with you or against you. <laughs> You can, look, uh, you can look to stand at some, some awkward stances and off, awkward lives of your ball playing this golf course, but a challenge for every level of golfer. Reese knew that he had to have a little imagination when he designed that mm -hmm. golf course, and the mounds, in a lot of cases, will channel drives back into the fairway, and, uh, and that's good for the golfers. At least they get a decent shot at the green, and those stances may be a little bit awkward, but that's part of the game. You got to be able to handle that. Another aspect of the course is the sand. Lots of bunkers throughout the golf course are strategically placed, but he's been fair in giving you a lot of opportunities to score at different parts of the course. Then you go across the driving range and the second course designed by Arthur Hills. Totally different look. Yeah, you've got thick tree-lined fairways. Off the tee, it looks like a, a pretty open, wide, generous fairway, but it actually narrows and kind of funnels down as you get closer to the hole, making it more difficult on that second shot. And then he throws another little challenge at you on a lot of the holes, some forced carries over wetlands and uh, vegetation areas that really are gonna make you take a deep breath, some of them, that come right up to the front of the green. Florida's first coast of golf covers such a vast territory, all the way in the north from the Georgia line mm -hmm. down through Flagler County. When you're at Hammock Beach Resort, you've got plenty of golf without having to go very far at all, enough to keep even the most avid golfer busy on a seven, eight, 10, 12 day golf trip mm -hmm. to the area. And you can find all these courses at www.florida-golf.org. It's a bright and beautiful day at Marine Land right on the Palm Coast. We've got the Intracoastal Waterway right here and just across this thin strip, the Atlantic Ocean. In between, we've got the Executive Director of Palm Coast and the Flagler Beaches. Matt Dunn. Matt, 
you're king of the water here. <laughs> this is a water wonderland. It is. Any given day of the year, you can fish, boat, kayak, paddleboard, go surfing, swimming, birding, riding trails, hiking trails, you name it. This is a nice diversion for people who come down to Hammock Beach Resort, play golf, and say, well, I want to get a day on the water. Tell them what they can do coming down here to Marineland. Sure, here in the town of Marineland, it is home to the Marineland Marina, which we're standing at now. Kayak, I know, is at the top of your menu. It is, yes, absolutely. My friends and I have a great time out here crabbing and kayak fishing. The intercoastal waterway here is a great spot for fishing and boating as well. So if people come down, they can get a guided kayak tour with somebody who knows these waters, keeps them safe. From novices to uh, expert paddlers, the Ripple Effect Eco Tours right here at the Marineland Marina offers those tours and also boat tours as well. Aside from being a town, Marineland is actually an attraction. Absolutely, the Marineland Dolphin Adventure, which is just across the street from us. It was uh, the first ocean aquarium in the world. And uh, you can see dolphin shows there. You can get in and swim with the dolphins. They have all kinds of different interactive programs that you can enjoy. And also uh, here in the town of Marineland is home to the University of Florida's Whitney Laboratories. And there we have the Sea Turtle Hospital, which offers tours from time to time. Uh, just down the street, about 12 miles, is home to the city of Flagler Beach. There's a, a tremendous foodie scene that's been growing and growing every year. I saw the activity down at the pier there. Families, couples, for those who don't want to walk inside one of the restaurants, they might catch their dinner right outside. Yes, they can. We're a very affordable destination for families and certainly golfers, absolutely. And again, just back to being such a wonderful outdoor uh, destination. People love it. We're here in the atrium of the spectacular Conservatory Clubhouse with Rich Stanfield, National Sales Manager for Hammock Beach Resort, That's great. an amazing property, but not surprising due to the lineage. Well, thank you. We're, uh, we are part of the Salamander Golf Collection, which also includes our Innisbrook Resort, which hosted the Valspar Tournament, as well as the Reunion Resort. This collection here on the east coast of Florida, including the two golf courses, the towers, all the restaurants, it's luxurious, but it's laid back. Palm Coast is a very laid back community, um, very unincorporated, uh, but yet you have all the amenities and things that you would like to have there. Uh, what's really nice about it is the resort sits on a, a section of the beach that is very pristine, uh, very untouched, very natural, which makes a huge difference. Two different accommodation styles start with the, mm -hmm. the lodge. Yeah, we have the, uh, the lodge building, which houses 20 units, more like a regular hotel room where you, you have your, your bed and a small sitting area, but you are sitting right on the ocean. You have views of the ocean from every room. Trust me, it is beyond spectacular with that view Thank of you. the ocean. And for those who need a little more room, the towers? Absolutely. We have the towers, 700 square feet rooms, which would be the one bedroom units, up to three bedroom units that go all the way up to 2,300 square feet. They have full kitchens in them. They're very comfortable. They all have balconies. All the balconies do face the ocean, which is phenomenal. Everybody gets an ocean view. Once you're in there comfortably in your accommodations, well, maybe it's time to get something to eat and drink, and you've got a nice assortment right at the property. At the lodge, the Atlantic Grill is very, very sharp place for dinner. The Atlantic Grill is a casual dining, but you can get anything from a hamburger up to a steak. Full service bar, just kind of a great casual atmosphere. And in the towers? Delfino's is open in the evenings. Delfino's is our upscale restaurant. Serves uh, Italian fare as well as an American fare. Great selection of wines in the, in the restaurant. Uh, definitely a place that you wanna, you wanna hit while you're there. Now, I'm the kind of guy that sometimes has to watch a game while I'm eating. Loggerheads is the traditional sports bar. Great venue just to sit down and relax with the guys after a round of golf. I like the assortment of activities also. One of the world-class fitness centers I've ever seen. I actually use it every day. It has a great amount of equipment in it. 
as well as we have saunas, uh, both wet and dry saunas. We have a full service spa that not only does massages, uh, but you can get facials, nails, hair done. Every stay we also have the availability of bicycles. You can take the bikes and ride around the resort or you can ride up and down the beach. We also have a small putt-putt area, which is natural grass instead of the, the astroturf that you usually see, and that's kind of a great little venue that you can go to, as well as we have a fantasy pool complex. The fantasy pool complex incorporates a lazy river and a giant water slide, multiple pools. For those people that don't like the, the ocean as well, but they like the sand and beach, we have a beach pool, which actually has sand around it, so that you can have that experience without having to go the, to the ocean. Down on the beach, if you want to ride off into the sunset, you really can do that. You can. There's a company that uh, rents horses and they'll, they'll teach you how to ride the horse. And you can take a horse up and down the beach and it's, it's a phenomenal experience. Everything is right there. You don't have to leave the property to take care of anything. We hope you enjoyed this special episode of The Traveling Golfer from the Palm Coast and Hammock Beach Resort as we take you from sea to green on this latest adventure. I want to say a special thanks to all the folks at Florida's first coast of golf for helping us put this show together. And with that, it's time to take a final walk along the beach. Tony Leodora's golf wardrobe, courtesy of Antigua, the leader in modern golf apparel. Tour Edge is the official equipment sponsor of The Traveling Golfer.